the Oshawa uh, River and many of the rivers um, in northern lower Michigan are really the result of uh, glacial activity 10 to 12,000 years ago. When the last glaciers receded, they left a large dome of sand and gravel that fans out from its apex in Gaylord um, in all directions. And as a result of the extensive sand and gravel deposits, the majority of the precipitation that falls on the landscape infiltrates to groundwater and is dissipated to streams in that manner. So we call these streams groundwater driven streams. And as a result of that, they're very stable. Their flow regimes are very stable. The Osable River here at Guides Rest, for instance, in a typical year, fluctuates no more than 12 inches in, in water level. And that's, in the world, that's a relatively unique situation. So we have stable flows and cool temperatures in the summer, warmer temperatures in the winter, um, and uh, it creates a very stable environment for trout. As a result, people come from all over the world to fish these populations of trout in the Osable River. My name is Dave Kozad. I'm chairman of the Trout Unlimited Michigan Property Management Committee um, for the last four or five years. It's a committee of approximately 30 people who manage three different properties which Trout Unlimited owns on the Osable River. Guides Rest is owned by the national organization Trout Unlimited. It's managed uh, for pedestrian public use. It's comprised of 400 acres and uh, it spans the mainstream of the Osable River for approximately one mile. Um, it was donated to Trout Unlimited in 1973 by the Stranahan family uh, from the Toledo, Ohio area. Um, uh, the typical uses that this land sees are fishing, hiking, bird watching, um, and we see a lot of, uh, of individual, thousands of individuals uh, who come through this property on an annual basis. Um, and we encourage uh, passive pedestrian use of the land. The uh, national organization Trout Unlimited was formed on the banks of the Osable River in 1959. So in many respects, we consider this the cradle of Trout Unlimited. And the committee members, we have a very diverse uh, management committee of 30-some uh, individuals uh, care a great deal about maintaining the watershed health here in the Osawa River Valley, and we manage the lands appropriately for that. Streams, streams are inextricably linked to the landscape. Uh, they are indeed an expression of water moving through the landscape, and as a result, it's of uh, the utmost importance that we make sure the land mass is conserved and managed in such a fashion um, so that water quality is, is not adversely impacted. Um, as such, we've maintained on all of our properties the riparian corridor in its natural state. For instance, when we, when we conduct a selective harvest or even a, a wholesale jack pine harvest as we did on this property in 1996, we leave more than ample buffer strips along the river so that the water quality and habitat are not adversely impacted. And one of the key priorities is to make sure that large mature trees are allowed to fall into the river um, and provide substrate for uh, you know, algae, diatoms, aquatic insects, and habitat uh, for trout. In in developing our forest management plans and updating them, we have uh, utilized a diverse group of professionals. Um, we received grants from the Natural Resources Conservation Service uh, to develop forest plans to update them, and then we received grants from them as well to implement uh, the recommendations found in those in those plans. Um, we've also we have representatives from the Michigan DNR both Fisheries Division and Forest Management Division who sit on the committee. Um, so we receive their input on an ongoing basis and integrate that into our thought process and the decisions we make in terms of how we manage the property. By and large, um, again, the river is, is the most important aspect in the end on the property. And so we want to make sure that anything we do um, on the land is well thought out and prudent. Um, in advance. Again, 
having a very diverse uh, membership in our committee uh, helps assure that. The, the maintenance of the riparian corridor by not allowing use to impact uh, uh, those reaches results in the mature trees that, that you see right here at the edge of the stream at Guides Rest. Um, we've done the same thing throughout um, you know, with the other two properties. One of the real benefits from uh, maintaining the integrity of the riparian zone is that trees will fall into the river. And as I'd indicated before, that's a very positive thing for a variety of reasons, both channel morphometry um, as well as, you know, maintaining uh, healthy populations of aquatic insects and, and trout. The challenge is that it takes, in this area, somewhere between 50 and 100 years for a tree to mature and fall into the river on average. That's a long period of time. Um, we, uh, but we make sure that when those trees fall in, that they, they get arranged in such a manner that they're not causing a problem with navigation, um, but that the wood is, is, is being productively integrated into the stream channel. Um, again, uh, it takes some patience and, um, and some due diligence, but uh, you know, we're very focused on, on maintaining the riparian zone. And one of the positive outcomes of that is the introduction, the ongoing introduction of, of wood into the stream channel. Any time that, that we as resource managers can help Mother Nature move in the direction that she wants to move in, work with Mother Nature, we're better off. If we can, if we can allow wood to accrue to streams from the riparian zone on its own, that's the most cost-effective way of putting wood in. Um, it's not always the fastest, but it, but it is the most cost-effective. Anytime that, that humans do the introduction, the cost is substantially higher. Um, but it does, you know, working with Mother Nature does force us to educate riparian landowners as to the benefit of letting that riparian zone, you know, go naturally. I think Forests for Fish um, is, is a great program. Our, our committee understands that a healthy land mass translates into a healthy river. So we don't want to do anything uh, to the land that, that's going to adversely impact that. We have no, we have no buildings on our properties. Um, again, they're available for, for public use. And for the most part, the public's been overwhelmingly receptive to the notion that um, they should try not to leave a footprint here. Come and go and don't, don't have an adverse impact while, you, while you're here.